Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me in today's episode. We are looking at October, the month ahead this October. As you can see, I'm not with you visually this time. It's just audio and the reason I'm doing that is because I think I'm still a bit jet lagged. Uh, the travel really took it out of me. I had a huge amount of work to do before flying out and I think I said that I'd do another video in Sydney Australia which I was fully intending to do I had a lot of notes and it was all about um, Saturn being stationary but we can look at that in the recap for this for this month when you know we look back at the month that's been so I, I'm going to go through those notes anyway but it has been a very very hectic time for me um, the website is live again, readings are live again. I know that some of you have been asking me, hey, when are you available for a reading? I'm definitely available for readings. Um, another thing that I'll be doing in the month coming up is I will be working as well. I will be picking up a new contract probably, working, um, doing what I do professionally. Hang on, I'm just going to plug in my Mac because it looks like the battery has... Oh, I don't know something's not going right here it my month has been like this everyone it has been just extraordinary the number of challenges so any of you out there who are who are being challenged who are being squeezed who have too much going on or um, not enough of what you would like to have going on or there's all sorts of possibilities hang in there the next couple of months could be a bit interesting and I mean look even when all those planets hang out with Ketu I do think that's going to be an interesting time as well so I, I feel like I've heard that the next couple of months are going to be a bit of a squeeze for many of us I know I'm experiencing that um, but the other thing is that I think for all of us across the board all around the world we're all going to feel a lot better say Jan Feb of next year Saturn is going home and I think we have a lot to look forward to I am certainly excited about and looking forward to that time so let me take a look at my notes for this month I think I've yes I've covered the fact that I couldn't do the outdoor video I promised I think I said we'd go somewhere lovely and just didn't end up happening um, but that's okay we'll do other things and we'll go other places let's take a look at last month so last month the thing that I wanted to talk about which I didn't do a video on was Saturn being stationary now he was stationary from specifically from 18th till the 23rd and I don't know if any of you remember what you were going through personally at that time I definitely did um, have a very nice experience actually and uh, it was it, it gave me the following insight and I'm just going to read out what I've written here um, th this insight came to me and here it is I'll just read it verbatim if your boundaries in relation to time were weak then you would have felt the future at that time okay so we're talking about the 18th to the 23rd of September and that's a pretty big concept what does it mean to have weak boundaries in relation to time I'm exploring that all, all the time, actually, thinking about um, boundaries in life and, and what kind of boundaries we have and create with other people, for example. Um, you know, boundaries and time. This is, this is a really um, important thing to explore, and I will explore these things in upcoming videos. But one of the things I personally felt at this time was that my boundary in relation to time to the very notion of time felt weak I, I felt like I felt the future at that time from 18th to 23rd and I know it was the future because the 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 feelings and energies I was feeling had had absolutely nothing to do with what was going on in my life at the time they were very positive feelings extremely so I, I felt these kind of um I would describe it as a wave of love it was really nice and but there's nothing in my immediate world and in my immediate life that could have been producing that or um, 
you know, you know, I couldn't connect it with anything in my world. So I know it's in, to do with the future and it's a good future that's coming. So look out for that as you contemplate and as you um, do your days and as you increase your awareness and as you raise your consciousness and as you are on this spiritual journey, look out for the fact that your energetic boundary to the concept of time might occasionally get weak and you, you might feel the future um, that, that, you know, you are going to manifest. That is definitely something to think about. And the, and the reason I say that it's a good time to do it when Saturn's stationary is because, or that, that's when you'll likely feel those kind of things. When a planet stations, um, I definitely think that kind of thing is, is possible at that time because there's stillness and you're able to feel the future. You're not going, you're not moving, you're not on a journey as such at that time when the planet stations and, and you know, the, the really big planets, they do station, even the outer planets. So you can look that up and if you know that they're going to station, try and feel, um, try and see if you can feel some some bit of future that's yet to come your way. I've got a note here as well about Saturn stationary, great time to commit a crime. Uh, I had r talked about that in last year's Saturn stationary video. Um, and it is, it is a great time to commit a crime because apparently the karmic accountant, he's not lodging anything. I, I think that's nonsense. I think it's actually a joke. And, um, but I've heard people say that. I've heard people who practice Jyotish say this, you know, it's a great time to commit a crime. Um, I've got a note here to say also it's a great time to be a victim of a crime, okay, and that's something to think about as well. And there's a lot of that going around with even simple things like internet scams and, um, you know, I got a voucher the other day uh, along with a gift and it was, oh, you have, you know, 10 pounds worth of wine to collect or something like that and it's a scam, it's a total scam. So, you know, these are just the things to be aware of when there's a, a planet stationing. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about was in relation to Saturn stationary, which happened last month. This one's kind of interesting, and this could happen at any time. It doesn't necessarily have to happen when a planet stations. But one thing I noticed as well between 18 to 23rd, last month was that my shoulder was really, 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 really stiff. And I looked up the meaning of why that's the case on a website called flowsandforms.com. What I'll do is I'll leave a link to that website below so you can check it out. I strongly recommend you have a look at um, this. I'll leave a link to the bit where you can put in your physical symptoms and see the mental patterns behind why it's happening for you. Now the reason I bring this one up in particular for all of us as part of this community is because I was having shoulder problems and this website said it means that I'm reaching into the future. So that was true and that was very true because from the 18th to the 23rd I particularly felt like I could feel a bit of my own future and my shoulder was in a lot of pain and I think I was reaching into like trying to reach into the future so that is interesting and and this goes against the principle of being in the now you know we want to stay in the now we don't want to be too, doing too much reaching into the future we want to allow the future we want to just allow we want to go with the natural flow of things and I think those of us who are into astrology we yeah we're kind of we're eager aren't we we want to know before and um, look at that, you know, I caused my shoulder some problems by wanting to know the future or by reaching into the future. So have a look out for that. Have, do check out that wonderful website, flowsandforms.com. So this month, I think I want to talk a little bit about the political climate here in Britain because it's so interesting. This is a really fascinating time for this country. It's absolutely incredible. And one of the things I wanted to 
Well, one of the things I wanted to experience was, yeah, what it's like flying back in here. Of course, for me, every time I fly back in here, I have this wonderful homecoming feeling. I'm the happiest person, you know, when my feet touch the ground and I breathe the atmosphere and I, I just immediately feel at home. But this time I was particularly interested to kind of gauge or get a sense of how is the country feeling because I was away for six months and you know what's it like with all this Brexit tension in the air you know are people anxious are people worried can, can you feel it and having been away for so long and I come back you know I think the media is going on about it a lot but the people are doing great I think people here are just cracking on just getting on with life and um, it's interesting I feel like a lot more people are more interested in leave even than they were um, at the time of the uh, at, at the time of the vote so let's take a look at it astrologically I did have a little bit of a look and as I was preparing the notes for today I had an idea I kind of thought oh this is very interesting what's going on at this time I looked up the dates okay let's just take a quick look at these dates so we've got Brexit dates there's a Brexit countdown calendar on uh, express.co.uk it's a very handy little thing here so it says 17th October EU summit 18th October EU summit 19th October deal deadline and that's circled in red we've got 21st PM ask for delay question mark 22nd MPs vote for general election we've got 31st Brexit day so let's take a look at this astrologically if I bring up my screen uh, and we have a look it's really interesting 17th October is when the Sun is debilitated let's have a look at this I'm going to click up through my software if I was a better video editor I'd probably be able to put this on the screen so you could have a look I'll see if I can I don't know if I've got time to do that tomorrow but we'll have a look yes definitely 17th October onwards look at that the Sun is debilitated okay this is really fascinating and now what we'll look at the 31st oh yep absolutely 31st wow the Sun is smack bang in the middle of um, in the middle of Libra there this is really really fascinating so we have a debilitated Sun okay and we've got brexit going on now what is the sun the sun is the kingdom the sun is the king the sun is you know um all of these things it's it's the height of royalty it's it's you know um but it's it's, it's definitely the kingdom as well it's leadership it, it's so much i mean there's so much in that fifth house leo sort of area there's a lot there it's tradition it's knowledge it's being self-made it's all kinds of things but in the context of what's happening with the United Kingdom right kingdom um, and the Sun being debilitated it, to me it doesn't really bode well the other thing we've got is um, Jupiter is on a particularly important point as well so to me when I'm reading the brexit thing I'm really looking at the Sun and in this case I'm looking at Jupiter as well and why am I looking at Jupiter because some time ago I think it was a few weeks ago I looked up um, when I've, I've typed into Google when did Britain join the EU so we've got 1972 joined 17th October so now with you live I'm going to click back to 1972 did I say yes 72 17th October let's have a look so I'm going to go back to 1972 hang on 1972 oh. okay so Jupiter is not on that spot who was it on that spot it was Venus I'm pretty sure 17th I'm pretty sure I saw that Venus was involved and Venus was involved in getting hmm well it must be a different chart that I'm looking at 
But basically, it's there was I identified a sensitive point, and I think Jupiter is on that point right now, and I think that's also why we're having some of these problems. And if Jupiter is expansion, um, and the Sun being debilitated, I mean, could that could that mean things will break? Things will break apart. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm going to be watching eagerly, and uh, I, you know, I want to see how this pans out. So I think that's about as much of a recap as I'm going to do on last month and the political stuff. I haven't had too much of a look uh, at other news stories. I know that there's a lot of unrest in Hong Kong. That seems like it's going to continue. That does not seem like it's going to end anytime soon. Um, I didn't do too much investigation on that one, but perhaps in coming months I will get I will get some time to take a look. The other thing I wanted, I've got a note here, is that we should all at this particular time y- use this time to take a look over the last six months. So take a look at April to September. Have a look at those months and have a look at what happened for you. Uh, and in particular, in relation to Saturn Ketu and, you know, was there a lot of past being dug up say for example that's one of the big ways i've interpreted that on this channel um if the last six months was an easy time for you largely relatively easy nothing major happened then it would have likely been a time of mastery you know um which is great if it was a hard time over these last six months and you found that there were a lot of changes and well you're probably having quite a lot of karma cleared out okay and you probably feel a lot lighter if you're not feeling lighter now then definitely um this month and this is what i one of the things i've said across everybody's mini report this is the month to you'll you'll feel like you'll be able to breathe again um if things have been quite challenging I know for me I think for me it was yeah a lot of changes it was hard it was challenging so I think I've had a lot of stuff cleared out which is um which is really good so it's always worth it it's always worth going through the tough stuff because you will feel incredibly free um when things move and shift as they are doing now they are this is the month where Saturn and Ketu they go apart and we should all be able to breathe a bit easier. Uh, I know I've been looking forward to this time when those two move uh, apart from each other. So, so yeah. So I'm going to start with the mini readings now. Normally what I do in these reports is I go through all the dates in this overview. But this time what I've done is I've written uh, more detail into the mini reports. And I'm just going to do each one as I go so here we go Aries moon welcome thank you so much for joining now we're going to take a look at the mutual aspects being shared between Mars and Saturn we're looking at around roughly the 26th of October is this a good thing for you well Mars energy is good in your sixth house so this is great but uh let's see where is Saturn he's in your ninth so this is this is On the one hand, it's good. You may feel very confident. You may feel like you can topple competition. You may feel like you can really win or achieve things. But Saturn's aspect from the ninth house um, could bring delays, knocks to your confidence. You may not believe in yourself. Um, It could be around beliefs or maybe you, you know, um, maybe you want to scrutinize the advice that you're getting. Okay, and be careful with advice that's coming in at this time. That's another thing, uh, another way that that could manifest. So Mars is good. The Mars energy is good, but um, Saturn's Saturn could be providing delays, difficulties, challenges, knocks to confidence. Uh, relationships are looking good across the board. Okay, this is a great month for love. Isn't that wonderful? So Venus is in Libra for the whole month. This is really wonderful. She pairs up with Mercury. So that's going to do wonders for your communication um, with the person you love. Uh, You'll feel really creative 
I've got a note here. Yeah, you'll feel really creative in your communications with the one that you love. Now, Venus doesn't do so well in the seventh house, but I think if I remember correctly, she is, there's a nice yoga being formed by Venus. So I'd imagine that cancels some of that out. Um, but the thing to note here is that she is in her own sign. So relationship wise, I think it could be a little bit of a mixture, but I'm, I'm feeling more confident and positive for you when it comes to relationships than not. So try to enjoy this good energy um, if you can. Now you've got one last month with Jupiter in Scorpio. So this energy might have provided challenges for you in terms of your partner, in terms of your in-laws. Um, but next month, Jupiter is going to be in a much better place. So that's good, right? You might just have another last month of that if you've been going through challenges with partner or in-laws. Um, but you do have some nice Venus energy. It's not bad. It's not bad on the whole. Let's have a look at what's going on with Saturn Ketu. Okay, now they are really separating this month. Feel easy and feel that you can breathe again in regards to all ninth house matters. So for that, we're looking at your beliefs. Um, we are looking at mind, the construction of mind, systems of thought. Um, we're looking at gurus, who you trust, where you get your info from, um, education, work even, um, sometimes, and of course, relationship with father, right? There's a lot here. So a lot of things are set to improve this month. It's going to be gradual. You're not going to feel it in one day. It's going to take time. But as Saturn and Ketu move apart, um, you will feel like there's more breathing room in your life. It's going to be good. So the full moon is on the 13th of October, Pisces, Revithi Nakshatra, in your 12th house. So here I've got the note, experience a big completion in your subconscious mind. That's huge. I mean, that's really profound. So Aries moon, I wish you well this month. It's not looking too bad. It's looking quite good on the whole. And um, definitely better times are coming ahead as well. So thank you for joining Aries Moon. We are now going to welcome Taurus Moon. Taurus Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, we're going to take a look at the mutual aspects between Mars and Saturn, which is happening roughly 26 October. I mean, it's kind of either side of that as well. So it's not just specifically that day or anything. It's This is a, a bit of a tone for this month. So... Um, neither Mars or Saturn are particularly happy being fifth or eighth from your moon uh, you know perhaps people are stifling your creativity other people right so we're talking family and in-laws so if you're feeling a bit stifled you want to be creative but you can't there are other people around or something like that my advice is hang in there this is going to pass uh, it's not going to take too long it's, it's just it's just a bit more time needed um relationships are looking really good across the board so we've got venus in libra for the whole month this is really wonderful energy she is pairing up with mercury so you're going to be really creative in your communications with the one that you love isn't that special um venus doesn't do well in the sixth house that is true she does not like being there uh but let's not forget she's in her own sign okay so there might be some discomfort and maybe that might manifest as a lack of confidence, um, a lack of self-belief, a lack of, um, you might feel just a bit of lack, but really you can use this energy to great effect and you can, um, you can, you know, it's, it's a lovely time to be falling in love with someone or, or doing that kind of thing. Uh, but I do have a note here for you in particular, Taurus Moon, relationship wise, go slow, don't rush okay don't have any expectations and don't um you know really wish it to be a particular way you gotta let go of the outcome right uh i've got a note here you have one last month with jupiter in scorpio in your seventh house and what is that how's that gonna this is good oh this is very good because 
he might give you blessings regarding relationship love yes or business before he goes this is this is a great transit um and when jupiter he's about to leave the house and i've seen this happen many times when a planet leaves a house or i've seen this happen on a retrograde where the planet will dip into a house and then come out um i've seen that's when the planet gives you stuff so look out for blessings or gifts or something regarding relationship love or business this could be really good for you uh saturn ketu are really separating this month hooray i'm so happy about this feel easy and feel that you can breathe in regards to all eighth house matters so that is other people in-laws family um, finance and it's kind of your partner's family um, it could be money as well so things are gonna get a lot better and i think for you taurus moon money's gonna get a lot better because jupiter's going into well he's going into your eighth house so yeah that that should be good too it should be better but i did i did in the research see somewhere that taurus moon money think things are going to be a lot better um full moon is on the 13th of october pisces ravithi nakshatra 11th house so perhaps you're going to experience some wish fulfillment around something social or something deeply important to you so it's a good time to reflect on what you might like that to be and look out for it around the 13th october see what's coming to a culmination at that time so thanks very much taurus moon for stopping by and we're now going to welcome gemini moon gemini moon welcome so we are looking at mutual aspects between mars and saturn um, and this is roughly around the 26th of october so and it is a few days either side of that date this is kind of a tone of the month with mars and saturn here um, you'll feel it and let's have a look at how it's going to pan out for you uh, neither Mars or Saturn are particularly happy. Yeah, being set fourth or seventh from your moon. That's true. Um, perhaps there'll be delay in relation to home, property deals or moving. So anything connect in connection with that fourth house there. Um, you could experience delays. You could experience blocks, challenges, frustrations, um, all that kind of thing. Hang in there. This will pass soon enough relationships are looking good across the board venus in libra for the whole month now let's have a look how oh this is good for you wow this is great so venus is going to pair up with mercury and you might feel particularly creative in your communications with the one that you love so this is really great um, venus does really well in the fifth house and she's in her own sign so relationship wise You've got some magic here, okay? And uh, I've, I've got the note here, lucky you. So this could be really romantic, beautiful energy. And you could use this to great effect. You know, if there's someone you've had your eye on for a while, this could be a great time to do something. Now, you have one last month with Jupiter in Scorpio in your sixth house. Uh, what's this bringing? okay this could bring some challenges uh in regards to your career your service to the world it could even bring some challenges health wise so this is the last month of this energy um and i think you're gonna have a much better transit with jupiter in the next month let me just look that up i'm gonna bring up my um on my website and this little plug for my website guys uh, you can see all the transit um i've got a lovely transit chart and i just want to double check that jupiter in the seventh is going to be good for you yes it is it's absolutely going to be good for you so the next uh, like kind of november when jupiter moves um you're gonna have a great time with jupiter now saturn and ketu are really separating this month so feel easy and feel that you can breathe again in regards to all seventh house matters so that's your partner um, your marriage partner specifically and or your business especially for those who are self-employed or perhaps you've got a business partner or that kind of thing full moon is on 13th october that's pisces rebati nakshatra in the 10th house so perhaps you're going to experience some culmination or deep realization in regards to who you are 
at a soul level in your purpose in your mission in the world I didn't particularly want to say career I didn't want to phrase it that way because we do have Pisces here and this is very spiritual energy and when we look at career in a spiritual context it is things like meaning and purpose and is your soul being engaged in what you do in the work that you do are you feeling fulfillment you know as you go about in the world and be you right so it could be an amazing time you could have some really amazing realizations and discovery around this full moon Gemini moon it's looking like a good time for you and I, I think when it comes to love that's going to be the best thing so um, I wish you well and thank you for stopping by and thank you for subscribing as well it really helps me out we are now going to welcome Cancer Moon Cancer Moon welcome thank you so much for joining now we're going to take a look at mutual aspects between Mars and Saturn um, and they're going to be in, in quite a hard aspect we're looking roughly around the 26th October but a few days before and after I was just eyeballing that to see the 26th it's somewhere there it's not particularly precise but um, the, you know there's going to be a few days either side and this energy is, is quite producing quite a tone um, to the month so Mars is happy being third from your moon and Saturn is happy being six from your moon let me just bring up your chart in fact Cancer moon I want to be extra precise with you here because I've really got to get this right now if I bring up my animated transits yeah it's sixth yeah no this is great this is actually quite good. You're you're going to have quite a productive time with this. Um, this is not bad. So I mean, look, you might be feeling more courageous than usual, and Saturn might be able to help you. Um, so when it comes to Mars and Saturn, you might be able to use these energies to some effect. You might be feeling quite courageous, and I'm going to say go for it. You know, there might be some delays, obstacles, frustration, but I, I kind of feel like Saturn's going to be helpful and help you materialize or manifest what you want. So if there's something where you need to be courageous, if there's something business related, um, something that requires your own effort, Saturn could really help. This could this could be a good thing. Work with it. I say work with it. I say, and if you're in doubt and you're wondering, do I or don't I, I'm going I'm to say go for it because it's looking quite good it's looking not too bad anyway um, because in terms of transits both of these planets are quite happy Mars and Saturn for you so yeah no it's good uh, let's have a look at relationships relationships are looking good across the board this is quite a focus this month for everyone and um, you are no exception you've got a great thing going on here so relationships are looking good across the board Venus is in Libra for the whole month I've got the notes here she pairs up with Mercury so you'll be really creative in your communications with the one you love how beautiful is that um, Venus does really well in the fourth house and she is in her own sign so this is fantastic you're one of the very lucky ones this is a beautiful 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 position of Venus because it's, a, it's the domestic scene as well and it's you know it's bringing your loved one home and just um, nurturing them and you know lavishing them with love I think it's fantastic so I've got a note here relationship wise revel in this beautiful energy lucky you how beautiful um, you have one last month with Jupiter in Scorpio in your fifth house so his energy may bring okay again yeah Jupiter's supporting as well I've got no you know Jupiter may bring the gift of romance or heightened creativity your way so that's really beautiful Saturn and Ketu are really separating this month so start to feel easy and feel that you can breathe again in relation to all sixth house matters so that's your health that's competition it's any legal cases that you're having to deal with um, yeah this is quite significant and I think we're all gonna feel better 
uh, a bit <laughs> anyway. But I did say in, in the introduction that it could be a squeeze for the next two months. Things could still be a bit hard. So so do watch out because I know that we're going to have a lot of planets around Ketu. Um, we're looking at December time. So hang in there. If, if you are being challenged, if things are a bit difficult, um, hang in there. Better transits are coming. So let's have a look. The full moon is on the 13th of October. Pisces Ravithi Nakshatra 9th house. So perhaps you'll experience some deep realizations in regards to the beliefs that underpin and rule your world. My goodness. So it's nothing small then, is it, Cancer Moon? You know, it's it's uh, it's pretty big. So you've got a lot to, to experience this month, I think. And I think it is going to be a busy month. But I think it's going to be a really good month. So thank you so much for joining Cancer Moon. We are now going to welcome Leo Moon. Leo Moon, welcome. We're having a look at these mutual aspects between Mars and Saturn. And I've said that it's roughly 26 October. It's kind of a few days either side of that date. And really, I mean, we're going to feel this energy. It's a kind of tone for the whole month. So... And this is going to be important for you. It's, it's, this is not the best Mars and Saturn for you. It's, neither Mars or Saturn are particularly happy being second or fifth from your moon. Okay, so I'm going to interpret that as being in regards to your family. There could be problems, arguments, challenges, delays. Um, I've got a note here. Speak carefully with those who are close to you. Okay, speak carefully or take your time or think before you speak. These are all good things. I mean, we should be doing that anyway, but um, with some of these big energies, hang on, I'm going to turn off my phone. Um, with some of these big energies, it can be hard. So, but I, I feel like you'll, you'll do well with this. Let's have a look what, what else is going on for you. Oh, this is great. So we've got some nice stuff with Venus here. Fantastic. You can always count on Venus for a good time. So relationships are looking good across the board. Venus is in Libra the whole month. She pairs up with Mercury. So you'll be really creative in your communications with the one that you love. Venus does really well in the third house and she is in her own sign. So relationship wise, you may find the courage to tell someone you love them. And I think that's so wonderful. Um, do it, you know, it's uh, all right. Things may not work out, but uh, you know that you tried. I always think it's better to, to have tried because you don't want to be left wondering what if, do you? Uh, you have one last month with Jupiter in Scorpio in your fourth house. So you've got a much better transit coming with Jupiter next. So I can tell you, you've got something to look forward to in November. Um, but hang in there regarding property. Hang in there regarding domestic scene. If you've got, say, deals that are taking time or things aren't working out or you're moving or you're trying to move and there's, you know, it's, you're finding it um, a bit challenging or, you, or you're finding challenges in regards to this area of your life. Saturn and Ketu are separating this month. Hooray. Um, feel easy and feel that you can breathe in regards to all fifth house matters. So that's your creativity, that's romance, that's children. Beautiful. And I mean, that's all being supported there by Venus. This is wonderful. Now the full moon is on 13th October, Pisces, Revathi Nakshatra, 8th house. So perhaps you'll experience some deep realizations in regards to your occult powers or skills, right? Maybe that could that could be an amazing time to, um, you know, if you're wanting to take some of that stuff to the next level or, or work at that a bit more or um, explore that stuff more. But I feel like you're probably, if you, I mean, if anyone who's into occult, type stuff we're all doing all that stuff all the time anyway so I could imagine that you're you're working away in that area of your life but do note that 13th October you're gonna you're gonna have some completion around that possibly some more energy to work with at that time as well okay Leo Moon thank you so much for tuning in I wish you well thank you as well for subscribing to the channel and we're now going to welcome Virgo Moon Virgo Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now we're going to take a look at the mutual aspects between Mars and Saturn, roughly 26 October. 
And it's kind of a few days either side of October. It's not just specifically that date. I eyeballed that date anyway on my software. I, I wasn't being so precise with that. But I mean, this is this is showing a tone for the month, Mars and Saturn being in mutual aspect. Now, I've got a note here that neither Mars or Saturn are, are particularly happy being first or fourth from your moon. Um, you might have a pure experience of delay, frustration or fatigue. Now, why did I say a pure experience? The reason I say that is because it's your first house. You know what I mean? Saturn is going to be throwing his aspect on you. So um, you, you're going to get a, a pure experience of, you know, it's not going to be particularly in any part of your life. It's just on you. You just might feel delayed, you know, um, say if it was second house or something like that I'd say family or something but I mean it's it's not it's you <laughs> so um watch out for that one ah that's not very good news is it let's see what else we got for you come on we've got to have something yes we've got some good stuff for you relationships are looking good across the board hooray um it's it's like that for everybody though I mean this is the month for relationships that's what I'm discovering and even through other modalities I've got um, an energy reader who I tune into and she doesn't use astrology at all and she has said that this is a good month for love so isn't that amazing everyone's saying it um, so yeah relationships are looking good across the board Venus is in Libra for the whole month she pairs up with Mercury so you'll be really creative in your communications with the one you love um, Venus does really well in the second house and she is in her own sign. So relationship wise, you may be experiencing the warmth of a relationship in a deep family bonding sort of way. I mean, just imagine that it's kind of like the coziness of, um, of, of childhood, of family, of being young, like whatever, you know, in your family or when you were growing up or, you know, the things that really made you feel loved or or wanted yeah you could experience that with a partner you could experience that on your own if you're happily being single it's not like that's the other thing yes this month's all about love but it's it, it, this is self-love too you know um and self-love is something you should be practicing and doing especially when you're in a relationship you, you know you can't forget about yourself and we tend to we tend to just focus on the other person but you can't do that you've also got to focus on yourself too so perhaps that's also what this is for you guys. Don't forget yourself. You don't forget to nurture yourself. Um, yeah, I think this is really nice energy for you. So you've got some good stuff here, Virgo Moon. Uh, you have one last month with Jupiter in Scorpio in your third house. So you might be given the gift of a short trip. Um, it's really interesting. Jupiter, he, he can give gifts before leaving a sign. Any planet can. And I have seen this. I've seen this where planets are just about to leave the house and they give a gift. Or I've seen a planet is dipping he's retrograding and he goes back into a house i saw this with a friend of mine she got married and had a baby when saturn retrograded into a particular house for her and it was like saturn was just popping back in that house to say oh you forgot to have the you know you forgot to get married and have a baby kind of thing so yeah that was a really interesting one to see um so saturn does that it's jupiter does it as well all the planets do so towards the end of um, this month, have a look, see if see if Jupiter is giving you any gifts. And I've got here, I mean, it's a third house kind of thing. Maybe the gift is courage. You know, maybe the gift is the ability to speak up and, and say something or act on something. Um, but it could also be, as I say, the gift of a short trip. You might be going somewhere. So who knows? Um, Saturn Ketu are really separating this month. So Feel easy and feel that you can breathe again in regards to all fourth house matters. So that's looking at your domestic scene, that's looking at mother's health, that's looking even at your health too, um, or how you relax and unwind after hours, right? Because that's the opposite of the 10th house. So where do you go to relax and unwind? We're looking at that area there. So that should improve greatly now full moon is on 13th october we're looking at pisces ravithi nakshatra seventh house so perhaps you'll experience some deep realizations in regards to love and in regards to marriage and in regards to commitment you know that's the kind of love that we're talking about when we're looking at the seventh house it's not the romantic sort of you're just 
starting something with someone this is these are the big commitments you make this is the big stuff the structures that um, govern your partnerships so Virgo moon it's looking quite good it's not looking bad at all um, I mean look okay Mars and Saturn not the best but everything else is looking very good so I wish you well thank you very much for subscribing and we are now going to welcome Libra moon Libra moon welcome thank you so much for joining now we are looking at mutual aspects between Mars and Saturn so this is roughly 26 October um, and it's a few days either side of that this is the kind of tone for the month so Mars Saturn 12th 3rd from your moon is this good well we've got some positive energy coming from Saturn here but Mars may feel really restless um, in this position and I know when Mars is in the 12th house he kind of feels spiritually restless it's like you know he'll try all these different things but mm, nothing quite satisfies um, relationships are looking good across the board now what have you got here oh, this is fantastic you've got a lovely thing here so Venus is in Libra for the whole month she pairs up with Mercury so you'll be really creative in your communications with the one you love uh, Venus does really well in the first house and she is in her own sign so this is fantastic this is great and I've got a note here this is a terrific energy for taking your self-love to new levels of mastery and remember self-love is so vital okay this is this is something yeah I'm talking about Venus but this is something you can impress Saturn with right he wants to see that he wants to see self-honesty and he wants to see self-love well I mean Saturn wants all kinds of honesty <laughs> not just with the self but um but yeah definitely you know if you can really master the concept of self-love I think it takes a whole lifetime to do but if you can get to new levels of mastery I should say um, that would be amazing so look at all the areas in your life where where you could be taking responsibility for yourself um, for looking after yourself for nurturing yourself physically spiritually emotionally financially right self-love includes that self-love includes creating a financial safety net for yourself okay so there's a lot included in in that one topic there now let's have a look at Jupiter you've got one last month with Jupiter in Scorpio in your second house you might be given the gift of quality time with your family it's because when a planet leaves he, a house sometimes very often he you can manifest things there or he, the planet will leave a gift or that kind of thing I've seen with Saturn he, when he does a retrograde into a house for example and it, it doesn't have to be long I saw in my friend's chart you know Saturn gave her the gift of um, a husband and a baby you know just in the retrograde he was doing in, in the house so Jupiter's leaving your which house did I say your second house yes yeah, so you might be given the gift of quality time with your family how beautiful uh, Saturn and Ketu are really separating this month so feel easy and feel that you can breathe in regards to all third house matters so that's your courage speech your ability to act your self efforts you know there's a lot here um, We've got a full moon happening on 13th October that's Pisces Revithi Nakshatra happening for you in your sixth house so perhaps you'll be able to pin something down materialize something big you might be able to earth something okay so I'm hoping that that's something that you you really like and really want and it could be in earthing something in relation to your health um, could be in relation to to helping you deliver your service to the world as well so it's looking really good Libra Moon uh, I think you've got a good month ahead we're now going to welcome Scorpio Moon Scorpio Moon welcome thank you so much for joining now today we're going to have a look at mutual aspects between Mars and Saturn uh, which is happening now I've had a look at all this on my astrological software and it's really we're looking at 26 October but we're looking at a few days either side um, you know I just eyeballed this this is not 100% precise but this is setting a tone for the month these are strong energies 
For you, Mars and Saturn, we're looking at 11th and 2nd from your moon. So this could be a time of wish fulfillment or materializing something important to you. This is beautiful, actually. That's great. Oh, good on you, Scorpio Moon, because you are in Saudi Sati and I know it's been tough for you. Yeah, I mean, look, Mars in the 11th, this is fantastic because Mars is great in the 11th. Look, every planet's great in the 11th, so this is fantastic. And because of Saturn's energy, that's why I'm saying materialize, and Ketu's there as well. This could be good. Uh, relationships are looking good, so let's have a look for you. Relationships, Venus in Libra for the whole month. Now, she pairs up with Mercury, so you'll be really creative in your communications with the one that you love. Venus does really well in the 12th house, and she is in her own side. Oh, this is good, 12th house nice 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 yeah she loves being there a terrific energy for experiencing love of all kinds romantic and spiritual and let's not forget spiritual divine love okay you don't have to be in a partnership you don't have to have a partner to, to and you don't have to have all that to be romantic either you know um romance is an energy that's available to all of us all the time Let's have a look at Jupiter now. You have one last month with Jupiter in Scorpio in your first house. So I've got a note here. Any low-level background worries uh, are soon to come to an end. So that is a good thing. Saturn and Ketu are really separating this month. Feel easy and feel that you can breathe in regards to all second house matters. So that's your family, that's savings, big wealth, that kind of thing. Even speech, even like how you speak to people close to you the full moon is on 13th october so we're looking at pisces revithi nakshatra fifth house perhaps you'll complete a major creative project or feel the fullness of your skills and knowledge so scorpio moon i know it has been tough for you but this is actually looking like quite a nice month for you um especially if you can carve out some me time especially if you can escape actually let's go to venus let's hang out with venus so if you can escape if you can you know have some time <laughs> escaping somehow that's that's what i'm going to encourage you to do and that will help you complete your major creative project as we just discussed for the 13th of october scorpio moon as always i wish you well take care i wish you lots of love as well you know i mean you're in sadi sati and i'm gonna wish love to all the sadi sati people because it is a it is a challenging one and um but uh, you know i think it's been challenging because of sat and ketu being together to be perfectly honest i think everyone in the world has been struggling even if you're not in sadi sati everyone in the world has been struggling with that energy and um speaking to someone in australia she is a western astrologer and she was saying that and she, uh, she's like Oh, she had white hair like she's, she's kind of in her 80s or something she was saying that she hasn't seen a tougher time in the world and I was like wow I guess she's not in her 80s maybe she's 60s but she was saying she hasn't seen a tougher time so everybody's been having it a bit tough so Scorpio Moon I'm going to leave you there um, thank you so much for stopping by thank you so much for tuning in and thank you as well so much for subscribing it really helps me out we are now going to welcome Sagittarius Moon Sagittarius welcome thank you so much for joining now we're having a look at the mutual aspects between mars and saturn which these aspects are occurring roughly at 26 october but even a few days either side this is not a precise thing i just kind of eyeballed it on the software and i can see that mars and saturn energy they're, they're significant players this month so there is quite a tone of mars and saturn this month uh we've got for you mars saturn 10th first from your moon okay it's not particularly great transit for either uh i've got a note here be careful of how you speak at work relationships are looking good across the board venus is in libra the whole month so she pairs up with mercury so it's a good time to be creative in your communications with the one that you love uh, venus does really well oh look at that she's in the 11th house of course yes good on you Sagittarius moon I'm telling you now if you want to fulfill wishes or something along those lines this is this is a time to do it so Venus does really well in the 11th house and she is in her own sight so wish fulfillment in love is yours 
this is great energy for you Sagittarius moon um, if you have something like that in relationships but look I mean even if you're single and even if you know you're on your own this is a beautiful time to really experience self-love self-care self-nurturing um, self-love is important and you, if you get that right you'll be impressing Saturn as well so Venus and Saturn they're great friends and um, this is a really good time for you to work on that if you can really loving the self really getting to understand what that means for you you've got one last month with Jupiter in Scorpio in your 12th house so you've been being expanded spiritually you would be tested a lot <clears throat> I think in this uh, in that area yeah it's pretty full on um, but good good full on you know <clears throat> things should ease a bit in this regard November onwards let's have a look at Saturn Ketu they are really separating this month so feel easy and feel that you can breathe in regards to all first house matters so that's yourself your body who you are your sense of self um, who, yeah who you are who, who you feel that you are you know that should be um, that should start to feel really good I, mean, I think you'll start to feel um, the the progress that you've been making as a spiritual being I really think that's that's what's coming it's exciting it's it's very exciting in fact and I know you're inside this Arthi. I know that this is a tough time but you're doing great you know and these are these are tricky energies master this and I'm telling you oh gosh the next you know 30 years or however long you'll have to wait for the next Sadi Sadi I mean it's life is just going to lift up to a new level once you've done this Sadi Sadi you're really gonna um you're really gonna have your whole life progress and move up to a new level it's going to be amazing Okay, let's have a look here. So full moon is on 13th October. That's Pisces, Revathi, Nakshatra, fourth house. So you're going to have some completion in terms of something connected with your home or in connection with domestic pleasure, peace of mind, that sort of thing. Amazing, right? That's looking good too. So Sagittarius moon, I'm sending you lots of love. I'm sending all my Sadi Sati people love this time. <laughs> Easier to do when it's just on audio as well. <laughs> and hey, I mean, it's a Venus in Libra. So this is the month for that. Um, and I wish you well. And I want to thank you for tuning in. I also want to thank you for subscribing. It really helps me out. And we are now going to welcome Capricorn Moon. Capricorn Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now... What have we got here? Mutual aspects between Mars and Saturn, roughly 26 October. And it's kind of a few days either side. Um, it's not hugely precise, this, but it, it's a tone for the month. Mars and Saturn are players this month. And for you, Mars, Saturn is 9th, 12th from your moon. This is not a particularly great transit for either planet. Um, be careful of how you speak at work. And or with your father even, actually, I'm going to say. Um, we've got the ninth house there you might find progress hard at work you might be finding it hard to progress so just take some time out don't worry too much um, because Saturn's there you gotta it's hard you gotta go with that Saturnian flow and you're a Capricorn moon I mean gosh if anyone should should know about that it's you and we know we know when we've got a lot of Saturn in our chart that well, we've we just got to slow down uh, relationships are looking good across the board so Venus in Libra for the whole month yeah no that's fantastic Venus in Libra for the whole month this is beautiful let's see where is this for you I see okay she's in the 10th house for you that's not the best um, look but it's not bad so Venus pairs up with Mercury so you'll be really creative in your communications with the one that you love uh, but Venus doesn't fare particularly well in the 10th house but she is in her own sign so what I'm going to say here is when it comes to love go slow take it easy uh, on the love front don't don't feel like if you're not feeling it don't push it or don't rush or, or don't do any of that but I will tell you you see because when it comes to love there'll be someone else right so and I will tell you that all signs there are only three signs where I'm sort of saying that you know Venus isn't in 
a great spot and you're one of them so if you think about it that's three out of 12 let me just check my little chart here I'm pretty sure I've got this right yeah there's just three spots where she's not particularly happy this is why Venus is so loved because there are only three places she's like the the one that she has a great time so and you can check that on my website I've got articles where you can have a look at that um but the reason I'm bringing that up is because you're one of the signs where Venus isn't the best but if it's if you're with someone it's very likely that they are having a terrific Venusian time so that's why for all signs across the board I am saying that this is a good time for love uh, let's have a look here so you have one last month with Jupiter in Scorpio in your 11th house oh that's beautiful so last chance for wish fulfillment my goodness um, yes and very often when before planets leave a house they will grant you something or they'll give you something or wish fulfillment something will happen you get a gift or something so I truly wish that for you um, especially you're in Saudi Sati so I could imagine you know you're adjusting to this energy and let's hope Jupiter can can lavish you with something something wonderful let's hope Jupiter is uh, somehow influenced by Venus with all that love there I don't know well let me bring that up <laughs> let's see any connection there not particularly oh that's okay right let's get back to the notes and the chart I have for you so Saturn and Ketu are really separating this month feel easy and feel that you can breathe in regards to all 12th house matters your spirituality your need for isolation aha yes yes you might have a need for isolation at this time oh and I relate I understand um, I hope you can get it there's a full moon on 13th October so what have we got there Pisces Revati Nakshatra third house so this is a completion for you you're going to experience a completion in terms of something connected with your sense of courage and your ability to 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 work to put effort in to do things to accomplish to achieve um, to create so I think it's a good time Capricorn moon it's not a bad time it's not the best time I will I will be honest and I will say that but it's a time of adjustment and you're adjusting to these big energies and I wish you well I send you lots of love I'm sending all love to all the Sadi Sati people this time because uh, you know Venus and Libra it's what we do take care of yourself and of course I'll see you next month so thank you for tuning in thank you for subscribing and um, I'll see you soon Capricorn moon all right we are now going to welcome Aquarius moon Aquarius moon welcome thank you so much for joining now we're taking a look at the mutual aspects between Mars and Saturn I'm saying it's roughly 26 October that's a particular date but I mean it's a few days either side and this is kind of a tone for the month so Mars and Saturn are 8th and 11th from your moon so you could be finding it hard um, at the moment and finding yourself under pressure or you could be finding yourself dependent on other people okay so it's this is not the best nobody likes to be dependent on other people um, Saturn though could be helpful to you so the so Saturnian delays could be good right now you might be wanting to be with people or to be doing things or but Saturn's delay might be good so let allow that don't don't um, try to force anything uh, relationships are looking good across the board so Venus is in Libra for the whole month she pairs up with Mercury so you'll be really creative in your communications with the one you love now Venus does great in the ninth house and she's in her own signs this is beautiful uh, enjoy love and romance this is great for long distance relationships too so that's really special um, you have one last month with Jupiter in Scorpio in your 10th house so that's challenges at work uh, what else yeah I mean look Jupiter is going to move into the 11th house soon that is going to be brilliant okay you're gonna have a good time with that so hang in there so that's kind of, I think that's November time let me just check that I've been kind of saying that on this report and I didn't 100% check what was the day yeah I mean we're looking at about the you know November the 5th so I was right November the 4th maybe Hang on. yeah 4th okay let's 
get back to the notes. Um, Saturn K through are really separating this month, so you'll be able to feel easy and feel that you can breathe in regards to all 11th house matters. So that's networking, that's collectives, that's groups, that's any groups that you are a part of, okay? Um, and that could be work groups, it could be all kinds of things. Uh, full moon is on 13th October. That's Pisces, Ray, within Akshatra, second house. So there's going to be a completion in terms of something connected with your family, right? Um, that could be really good. It could be like a... Um, um, and this might have been ongoing this might have been you know like a, a restructuring of power in your family or something along those lines a completion in terms of something connected with your family this could be a really good thing so um and in the lead up there could be it could be uncomfortable but i feel like it could be this could be a really good thing so good this is good aquarius moon i want to thank you so much for tuning in I want to thank you for subscribing and I will see you next time. Now we are going to welcome Pisces Moon. Pisces Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, now let's have a look. We're looking at the mutual aspects between Mars and Saturn and I'm saying roughly 26 October. It's a few days either side. Um, I mean you could be feeling this the whole month even. These are kind of bigger energies and there's a tone of this throughout the month. So for you, it's Mars, Saturn, 7th, 10th from your moon. So we're looking at partnerships, career, business, life, purpose. Any of these things could be tough or could be challenging or you might be experiencing delays um, in, re in relation to, to 10th house matters. We are looking at career really. Um, Mars, Saturn. So these are kind of tougher energies. One's the accelerator, one's the brakes. <coughs> so, you know, it, it's it's really interesting. Um, but relationships, what's that looking like? Let's go to relationships. So they are looking good across the board. Venus is in Libra for the whole month. She pairs up with Mercury, so you'll be really creative in your communications with the one that you love. So Venus does great in the eighth house. This is beautiful. And she is in her own sign. So enjoy love and romance this month. Uh, let's have a look here. Jupiter. What's Jupiter doing? Jupiter is in Scorpio in your ninth house. Okay, this is great. So he's going to leave. He's only going to be there for another month. So watch out for what he gives you. He might give you something. So you might receive a gift in terms of learning, in terms of knowledge, in terms of brilliant advice, or in terms of travel, maybe, or in terms of... Um, promotion promotion at work even so i know i said that work's going to be hard that's with mars saturn but who knows i mean jupiter might be able to help you out um and promote you or something who knows that will depend on the setup of your chart and, and natal you know placement of planets and, and things like that we'd be able to see that in more detail but let's have a look generally uh, Saturn and Ketu are really separating this month. This is good. We want this. This is very good. Feel easy and feel that you can breathe in regards to all 10th house matters. So that's career, that's work. So I know I was saying that it's it's challenging there. It is, but then on the, on the other hand, it, it is going to get better. Yep, that's for sure. So career, work, this is going to improve for you. Um, hang in there. Hang in there with your with your career and, and you might have to go with some delays you just might have to allow them and not push things uh, the full moon is on the 13th of October so that's Pisces, Ravithi, Nakshatra, first house so you might be experiencing some very deep very profound insights into your own core being who you are at a core and soul level and that's huge that's quite epic actually um, for all the signs, I've been having a look at what the full moon is going to mean to them. And for you, it's quite a big one. It's good. And be aware, you know, make make a note in your diary maybe about this one, 13th October. Um, this could be a good one. But on the whole, Pisces moon, it's looking really nice. Okay, it's tough at work, but, you know, it's beautiful relationship energy. And if you're not in a relationship, self-love explore self-love and i've been encouraging that to everybody 
um, because not only will you be making great use of that Venusian energy, you'll be impressing Saturn because he wants you to do that. He wants you to be 100% honest and he wants you to look after yourself and love yourself. So remember that self-love isn't just a bubble bath on a Friday afternoon. It is also very much looking after yourself spiritually, materially, financially, right? Creating a financial safety net for yourself, you know, um, getting on top of things, getting on top of your admin, get, doing whatever you have to do to really look after yourself and feel relaxed, feel on top of things, feel nurtured, um, feel treasured, feel cared for, right? We can do that for ourselves. So Pisces Moon, I'm going to leave you with that. I want to thank you so much for tuning in and I think I'm going to wrap up this entire episode. So it's it's a new one for me. I don't think I've done uh, an audio. Let me think. No, I haven't. I've never done an audio only and it's been really good to do because, um, yeah, I'm too jet lagged to actually put makeup on and record a video. So that's how it's panned out for me today. Anyway, I'm going to love you all and leave you now um, I hope you have a great month ahead please know that I will be doing videos again soon I might I might just do a November one and then get back to doing weekly videos I'm not sure at this stage I've got a lot of things to sort here and do um, so I am busy the other thing I want to say is that I am taking readings again so anyone who wants to book me please do um, and know that I'll be scheduling you in such a way that you get proper time with me um, because I do take time to do the readings quite thoroughly. Okay, well, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for subscribing and I look forward to seeing you next time. Mm -hmm.